Hello there folks, Kirk here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what we're going to do is we're going to show you how we do a scratch and a brown over uh, this patch. We actually did the lath on here and the builder, uh, his name is Stacy Mackey, he's located in Oakland. By keeping with the traditional architecture style, he installed this window here so it keeps with what we have here. Let me give you uh, his telephone number. He's located in, in uh, Oakland and I do a lot of work for him, he's a real good guy. Again, his name is uh, Stacy Mackey, Mackey Builders. Let's see, his phone number here is uh, area code 510-533-3456. He's a great contractor for restoring all these Berkeley homes. He does quite a bit of them. He does interior, he does exterior, he's doing the kitchen inside. Anyway, I'm using hot mud, so we're gonna get started here. Hot mud just means it has luminite in it. Casey Mackey and I are seeing how many buckets this will take. I calculated eight. He's calculated ten on paper. But I do my calculations by eye. He does his figures, everything on paper. Of course, we're not going to show you the entire thing, but I'll, when we get to that stage, we'll show you. I'll tell you just how many buckets it did take. All right, guys, we are on bucket six, I believe. Um, now I'm, I've got both of my coats on here. Now I'm gonna rod this. Now this, this way gets the true and plumb in all directions. Really gotta know what you're doing. We should do both coats. We're using luminite here and Portland cement. All right, guys, we are on bucket seven. And I am going to use one more to dash about eight buckets. Okay guys, we're at the stage now where I'm floating this window in. And what we do is we feather it into the joint, into it. That way the transition is really nice. This is the uh, first stage for this particular texture. And what this particular texture is, is a very, very light dash. And of course, as usual, we are multitasking. We are doing several windows. When one window is set, we'll come to it. If it's in the sun, we'll come to it. If it's in the shade, we improvise. So now that I got that floated out, I'm going to show you is a light dash. And this is a dash brush. Eight inch bristles, square. Okay, you mix it in soupy mud. This mud has got to be sandy. Then a light dash means you can't have too much on it. So you see how I'm letting some of it out. You take a practice shot at first, like I do, okay? I'm just giving a practice right here to see just how much is enough. That's why I gotta cover this window too. Because I'm gonna get all over it. Now what I'm doing is giving it a light dash. If, depending on the type of dash on the house, I'll either leave the mud on or take it off. This I'm leaving it on. Or taking, I'm sorry, taking it off. Taking it off. Sometimes a heavy dash, tunnel dash, I'll leave it on. And basically what I want to match is this finish here. I gotta match that so where when they paint this, it blends in. So light dash. Very light. Just like the old saying, dash and salt. You just keep going over it. If it's real light, you go over it and over it. We're gonna do it, call it all of a day. It's going to take me a good half hour to finish this, so I won't run you through the whole thing, but I will show you the completion of it when we're at that stage. Alright guys, we are about done here. One thing about a painted dash finish that's 80 years old is it usually has lots of coats of dash on it. What I did is I wet this sponge float now because once I pulled all this off, it's, I want this just to take two coats, but sometimes it takes more than two because it's the same finish however it just has a lot of paint on it so what I'll do is I'll soften it up a little bit like I'll just take my sponge float a little bit of water and I'll soften it up this really takes you got to have a good eye for this kind of stuff here so I'm looking at it and I'm seeing where it's a little rough I know what I'm looking at because I do this all the time anyhow when they paint that guy right there it's gonna be a close enough match uh, try to get them exact but 
we do the best we can. I, I think that's going to come out real nice. I think these folks are going to be very pleased. Anyhow, my name's Kirk, and if you got time, go ahead and snap photographs of your work, because that's the majority of these jobs I'm doing are emails. They're emailing me photographs, and I'm just bidding them online, and I'm coming and doing them. And usually, 9 out of 10, I'm pretty accurate. Uh, very rare where I say, oh, gee, it's not this or that. But the more pictures you take, like the height and the description of it, I can bid it directly online and give you a, a, a price for it. Anyhow, my name's Kirk. Thank you, Jay, for doing the camera work. And as usual, we'll see you folks on the next one.